Hey there, so today we have a lesson and this is sort of my take on how I taste a beer, but also um, how I learned to uh, train a palate and I, how I recommend that you uh, try to train a palate. And we're gonna do the most simple beer here. So uh, what's the first thing to do? We obviously have to open it. And I recommend that you pour heavy. Um, there's, it's better that you have more head than less head. Um, the head is really where you get the aromatics. You're really volatilizing those aromatics and the CO2 is like really pumping up those aromatics into your nose. So try to pour a little bit more heavy instead of people that pour um, with no head into your beer. So try to pour a little bit aggressively and there you go. You get a good amount of head in there. One of the first things that you might see me do in reviews is to uh, look at the appearance. I recommend that you don't look at the appearance. You try to figure the appearance a little bit later into your tasting because your perception of beer is very much colored uh, by the uh, color of the uh, beer. Just because of the color, it could be light, it could be medium, uh, amber, it could be dark, whatever it is, it, your, your perception of what you can taste and smell might be colored by that. So um, try not to focus too much on the appearance. Really, what we're here to do is try to uh, learn how to taste beer. So try not to focus on the uh, appearance and then you swirl it around. I want to, again, uh, build more head, really release aromatics, and I dig my nose in for a first uh, little smell. And so first in, then you go a little bit deeper. Then you go a bit, little bit more deep, and then you can really sink your nose in. And you're gonna find a nostril, maybe both of your nostrils are equal. For, mine, for me, it's my right nostril that's the strongest. I don't smell as well. Right is really where I get uh, most of my aromatics. And you know, you get a little sniff up front, then you go deep. And you're gonna find a complexity, because the first part that I got was a little bit of light fruity character. It has this kind of like a tart green apple thing. And then inside, I get more of the malt. I get the malt uh, a little bit crackery, a little bit grainy. And you sort of just, you know, get your nose in there, try to sniff, you try to sniff light, you try to sniff heavy. You can move your nose around the glass, the front part, the back part, and you're gonna get the most complexity of the aromatics by doing that and just go all over the place. And so what are you doing when you're smelling? You're looking for obviously flavor profiles and um, how do we figure out those flavor profiles? So on the aromatics, go on a website like Beer Advocate. This is literally how I uh, try to train my palate. Go on a website like Beer Advocate and go through some, I mean, there are people that are very uh, well-trained tasters and they will do reviews on Beer Advocate or go on a Craft Beer Brewing Magazine and they have a magazine and you can find uh, BJCP judges doing uh, reviews of uh, beers on that uh, magazine. And whatever content you can find, hey, you can check out my channel if you uh, trust my palate and just Try to uh, gather vocabulary from people that are reviewing beer and compare and contrast. Write down notes of what you're smelling, what you're tasting, and then compare and contrast with what other people are uh, tasting. And then you're going to find a wider, wider vocabulary. You're going to start finding a actual vocabulary that a lot of people use for beer. Uh, the malt flavors, the hot flavors, the ester flavors, the, uh, the phenols, um, water character in a beer. And you're going to get a wider vocabulary. And then you're going to start learning your own vocabulary. And that's really where it gets great. So you get the aromatics and now we have to taste. I wish I could pour out how much beer I, I just uh, sipped, but had to be half an ounce. And people complain about that. But as you see, the important thing to do is not to, because I, I mean, the way you drink this beer is to go like this. Gulp. And guess what? Barely any of that hit the, uh, my tongue. Just went straight to the back of my throat, down, I'm not really tasting anything. Obviously the beer is gonna be, uh, be there and it's sort of like sit on your palate afterwards. But again, what I recommend, small sip and just sit there, chew the beer. Wait four or five seconds and breathe while you're doing it. And you're really activating your retronasal uh, olfaction. And what that means is that Flavor is not really activated by what's on your tongue. Your tongue uh, gives you taste. It gives you sweet, bitter, umami, sour. Uh, uh, it doesn't really, saltiness, it doesn't really do much. Flavor is really activated by your nasal cavity and, and in between uh, your, your mouth and your nose. And so you might notice that when you're sick, you're not really going to taste much and that is because you're blocking your nasal cavity. And so when you drink, you wanna breathe. Exhale, breathe, and then after it's done going down, breathe again. Let that flavor soak into your palate. And so what you wanna do is again, do the same thing you're doing with the aromatics. Compare and contrast with other tasting notes that other people have, and, and you're gonna, going to find matching things, you're gonna learn things, you're gonna find things that you don't agree with, and that's where you really uh, get a wider vocabulary. And one of the most important things is that you don't only drink beer, but now your vocabulary is now tested to your palate. So now you're going to go out 
I recommend that you go out and try different foods. Go to a restaurant and look at something on the menu and realize, hey, th this time I'm not going to order just the cheeseburger. I'm going to order something that I don't usually taste. Maybe something that I have never tasted before. And taste things, smell things, smell the flowers. And that's where you're going to find a wider vocabulary and then you attach that onto the flavor profile of what you find in beer. What do I generally taste? I look, I look for the initial impression. This one has light fruity character to it. It's like, it's like graininess. And then as a weight, it's obviously quite watery. And then it's like a weird, slightly like, not like bad, but like a slightly metallic kind of thing. And it's dry. Um, it's generally lacking in character. So really when you could pick through the, the, the little flavors that you can find in Budweiser, that's when you get really crazy. But obviously something bombastic in craft beer, you're going to find a lot of flavor. You're going to find a lot of descriptors. And that's really obviously what I generally recommend people do. So how do I generally uh, vocalize and explain what I'm tasting? So for me, I think of beer as a, a roller coaster, right? Um, you have your initial flavors and it goes up, it goes down, um, you wait, it has an aftertaste, and then that's sort of the end of the ride, right? So it's a roller coaster. So I try to th trigger things, uh, trigger thoughts as I'm tasting with what I'm initially tasting, how it's sitting on my palate as, as I wait, as I push it down, drinking it, and then what I taste afterwards. And then there's also mouthfeel consideration here. That flavor, the fruitiness, washes away with a little malt, it goes down, aftertaste, watery, watery, watery. Yeah, I'm not gonna review Budweiser for you, but but, but yeah, it, it, that's sort of the explanation of the roller coaster of the ride of what I try to find in beer. So you A, are looking for your initial impression, like what am I getting first? Is it bitter? Is it sweet? Is there big amounts of that kind of banana esser character that I get from Hefeweizen, right? And then you want to nitpick. And what am I tasting initially? What am I tasting next? What am I tasting next? What am I tasting next? And then what am I tasting afterwards? And as it lingers onto your palate. So that's how I recommend that you try to tra taste beer and also develop your palate. Um, again, just uh, finding people that are more knowledgeable about beer, that have great descriptors, is very helpful. Uh, maybe you can uh, create a tasting group for yourself with your friends and everything. But again, the easiest way is to crack a beer and don't just sit there and drink it. Um, for every new beer you have and even beers that you are trying, again, try to uh, grow a palate and again, compare and contrast tasting notes, see what people are tasting in beer and see what you can taste in a beer and this will help widen your horizons, widen your palate and again, I recommend that you taste not just beer, but everything else out there and that really grow your palate. So uh, that's the venture of how I taste beer. And I want to uh, ask you guys to post any questions below and how you end up learning palate because uh, obviously everybody has a different kind of adventure and I'm curious to hear about it. Until next time, guys. Cheers. Later.